So I'm going to round this up here, and uh, I'm not going to take that long. But um, what Robbie, what we're discovering is the that Canada <coughs> is a deep state, and it is getting old. <laughs> well, and they're recruiting a younger generation. Of they're trying to recruit a younger, a younger generation of tech pilots successfully. Okay, so uh, so we are within the potential terrain of defeating uh, the British Empire. Uh, the hardest part uh, was discovering there was a British Empire. There is a British Empire. It still is. <laughs> okay. Uh, that discovery was made by the movement in the late 70s because nothing made any sense in terms of who was directing whom and the actualities of history as opposed to what was being uh, said in, in, uh, you know, in, in the academic institutions and in the, and in the media. This was 40 years ago. Uh, 40 years ago, Dope Incorporated was published. And, and along the same time, we announced an open conspiracy to bring down that empire and free the U.S. and the world from that empire. And uh, the uh, oh, Dope Incorporated was banned in Canada and the United Kingdom when it was published. And. But the, but the British Empire was really a continuation of the Dutch Empire, which was a continuation of the Venetian Empire, which was a continuation of the Roman Empire, which was a continuation of the Persian Empire, which was a continuation of the Babylonian Empire. And, and th th these, these empires are run by an oligarchy. Um, and you saw how the empire was continued after World War II. Charles gave you a very good sense of how, of, of that, of the continuation, the, the failure to bust it up, which is what FDR had intended. So that was the continuation. And very good. I'm glad you did that. That was excellent, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And so in these empires, uh, the mass of humanity are, are at best, um, ignorant or, or uh, un, un, in, uh, lost sheep, or, or they're uh, slaves or serfs, or etc., depending upon the period of history. <laughs> now, in each case, from Babylon to Persia to Rome to Venice to, to Amsterdam to London, when the empire has run its course uh, and is self-collapsing of its own degeneracy, a new empire is created uh, from the more um, from the more vigorous elements within the empire or from the outside the empire uh, to continue the process. Uh, it is, however, the same oligarchy in continuity. In other words, the Babylonian oligarchy. And the priesthood continued into the Persian Empire, and then they continued into the Roman Empire, and then they continued ultimately into the Venetian. There's a continuation. Now, some of the families die, and some of them, but a lot of the families continue on. The same oligarchical network. They might recruit new new elements to them, but it's the same group. In the case of the European uh, Mediterranean history, it's the same group. It has it has an unbroken continuity relatively speaking, and then there are these periods where things shift, and then it gets reconstituted. Uh, it is the same oligarchy. They fight each other, but they regroup under a new management. Now, all the world's oligarchs, those centered in the British system and those centered outside the British system who wish they could become a better part of the British system, essentially today a universal oligarchy are looking at an end of the line. All of them, all the oligarchs in Western Europe, in Western, Eastern, Southern, Northern, this is the end of the line for them. The Belt and Road is the end of the line for them. The Belt and Road Initiative and its, and its successful implementation is the end of the line for them. 
and its consequences is the end of the oligarchy. And uh, now, the first open major skirmish we had with the empire with through Dope Incorporated was actually was actually the battle around Marine Midland Bank in New York State. Marine Midland Bank was a key bank uh, in, in New York City. It was not the biggest bank, but it was a key bank. And Hong Kong Shanghai Bank wanted to take it over. Uh, and we fought a battle with the state superintendent of banking, uh, Muriel Se Seabird, to demand that before the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank uh, be allowed to take over Marine Midland Bank, that uh, that they had to show their books. <coughs> and this was a huge battle, and it ended with the Federal Reserve overriding uh, the, uh, this, this uh, super, state superintendent of banking. Now, at the same time we were discovering the British Empire, we were discovering Hamilton, Liz Carey, we were discovering Benjamin Franklin and the Leibnizian origin of the American uh, system of the American Revolution. And then we were discovering Plato, and then a little bit later on the European Renaissance, Cusa. We were discovering all of this in that context. All of this began, uh, this, this trend, this, this, all these discoveries are occurring rel relatively in, a, in a, about 40 years ago, 41, 42 years ago. And had we not discovered all of this, we would not understand the world today, nor could we establish a conspiracy to end the domination of the world by this oligarchy. And the world as we found it in the 70s was the world of materialist ideologies ardently embraced which defined the world. You had the freedom ideology of the free market, capitalism versus socialism, communism, and Marxism, and you see how, how the, the CCF began to move in that. And if you were alive and were becoming political, you would choose between, you would tend to choose between the two. There was no other discussion, there was no other concept, uh, political concept, there was nothing else. You either, let, you either went left or you went right or you went a little bit Marx or a lot Marx or <laughs> a little bit Lenin or a lot Lenin or you know a little bit Mao or a lot Mao <laughs> you know? or you rejected all of that and you believed in the supremacy and you read Atlas Shrugged and and, uh, <laughs> and you were and you were gun ho about your own uh, you're, you're going to step over everybody all the way up the ladder or whatever now in the middle of this situation you had the destruction of the culture you had the introduction of the rock, uh, sex, drug, counterculture. You had the introduction of the limits to growth, environmentalist movement. And then you had the introduction of increasing uh, evangelical end times movements, as well as uh, the New Age movement. So you had all of these different movements being introduced. <coughs> and the, partly their success of these new movements was because in the West there was still uh, uh, well, they, they were introduced partly because in the West there was still an anti-oligarchical cultural strain in Christianity. And both the traditional uh, left and right reflected an idea of progress in their materialist views, even though their materialist views did not account for progress. And it was given, it was given to wrote an exhaustive study at the end of the 1700s of the Roman Empire that informed the incoming British East India Company that the empire today, that Christianity or the concept of man in the image of the creator was the greatest threat to the oligarchy being able to or, uh, organize it and uh, in perpetuity a successor empire. Now, where do we stand now in this war to take down the British Empire and the rule of humanity by oligarchs? At this point, I want to introduce the concept of the flank. Essentially, you attack an enemy position. The enemy responds, and, and so responding exposes its forces, and then you have a, a new target to attack, and you keep attacking. And that has been the method of, of, of 
of the LaRouche movement throughout these, this period, especially the last 40 year period. The very discovery of the British Empire occurred in the context of such a situation where LaRouche from 1975 to 1978 was organizing for the Global Development <coughs> International Development Bank, which you saw Charles put out. And that put up, and, and the forces that came out of the woodwork to stop the organizing is what revealed to us the British Empire. Uh, we could not have made that discovery if, La, if the LaRouche movement was not continually initiating policy fights. The same principle applies today, uh, subsequent to the Trump election. The British Empire had to deploy to stop Trump or force him to adopt their agenda of war and, de and depopulation. They have, yet they have yet not succeeded in either one. And this was made very clear after the election results. Okay? The British made that very clear, that, that, that this had to happen. And where do we stand now, 15 months after the election? Well, in September, five months ago, we began circulating the Mueller dossier, which provided the coherence for understanding why Trump is under attack and where the coordination was coming from. Do not underestimate the impact of our relatively small distribution of the Mueller dossier, because it was the only document that was being circulated where there was coherence being established as to why and who. Okay, now this is not a time and place to give you a blow by blow of the fight, but it is clear to me now that both Senator Grassley of the Senate Intelligence Committee and Congressman Nunez of the House Intelligence Committee are broadening their investigation along the lines of the Mueller dossier, focusing on the role of Christopher Steele and all the leads to and from Christopher Steele, which also are the leads to and from MI6 and the British Foreign Office. It is clear to me that they have figured out the British are coordinating of the coup against the presidency. That's very clear to me. Maybe they're not saying it publicly, but that's very clear to me. Now, what does this mean? This means a freak out. That means the entire British establishment is that we're talking about is, is freaking out right now. Because the more, the more they fight this thing, the more they're exposed. And things are not working the way they're supposed to work. Nor is this coup going to go away. The coup isn't going to get stopped. The coup is not stopping. The coup is continuing because there is no other option for the empire but to carry out a coup inside the United States. Everything that the empire wants to do is on hold until they either get Trump out or they force him to submit. And all assets are being deployed. Now I'll give you two examples of this, um, and I'm gonna finish, I'm not gonna take too long. Two, two things Trump has, has done in the last week, week and a, uh, week and a few days. Uh, yesterday at the, or the day before yesterday, at the Turnbull press conference with the uh, Prime Minister of Australia, he referenced, there was a question asked about China and, you know, China this and China that. And he said that Xi and him can work together, that he, he, he has a very good relationship with Xi, and that he can, that relationship can be uh, used to, 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 to build a better future. So here's China coming under massive attack in the media, you know, what's his name? Marco Rubio is going all out about banning the Confucian societies. And, you know, uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, the, head of the, F the head of the FBI, Christopher Wray, is saying that all, that the Chinese students are, um, are agents of, of China. Look, the entire Chinese community at this point might as well be called agents of China because they're not, because, because they're Chinese. <laughs> they happen to be Chinese. What are you? What are you? <laughs> Japanese in 
1941. Yes, 1941, yeah. they put them all away. Well, you got a lot of Chinese to put away. So anyhow, <laughs> so anyhow, so so in that context, what is Trump saying? He's saying, you know, I can work with Xi. So so there's this massive escalation, this thing with the uh, with the indictments of the 13 Russian patrollers. <laughs> They happen to be CIA. <laughs> they happen to be connected to the CIA to a CIA operation inside Russia. <laughs> totally bizarre. Anyhow, but it's, it shows you it shows you the the but they did that for the atmospherics of the of the of the uh, primarily the uh, the Munich Security Conference where you had 800 um, uh, defense ministry connected people and, and policy people. And they created a, a hysterical, you know, environment there. You know, and everybody's going nuts. And, the, and there's an escalation going on in Syria. There's an escalation now going in Ukraine. Um, the Ukrainian government is now preparing <coughs> the backing of the U.S., Canada, and Britain to go in NATO to go to, to uh, with the with the Donbas and. Uh, this is all happening. It's all being unleashed now because they have they're, they're desperate. Okay, so now we we have an article in the New EIR. It's on it's on the website, I believe, also on how the British and Obama did with the U.S. So a lot of the stuff is being is being revealed, and and more will be revealed. But it's not over. It will not end till you crush them. Or until they surrender, one or the other. They, they, they surrender. You know, the old, the, the empire uh, it has to be defeated. And what, what has to happen internally in their minds is their sense of self-confidence and the power of, of who they are has to be destroyed. You know, you don't, you, you know, you have to defeat them on, on that level. And, and so that's where we are. Now, in Canada, we, what Rami has done is, what the society's done is we're starting to get the map of the internal, uh, the internal division inside Canada, which uh, does exist, and it is the, it is the deep state versus certain political uh, networks that have a different point, different idea, and are, and I would like to have a, have a Canada not be uh, as another sacrificial, um, another sacrifice for the empire. They don't want Canada to be a, a, just a sacrifice for the empire. So I'll stop there. We'll open it up. Um, I, I just want to add one thing, which is right along what you said. And it was probably one of the funniest things that happened at this meeting. Um, describing the guy with the socks and then the young guy who were having the technical problems. The whole presentation actually started late. And ironically, the IT guy that came in and saved the day was Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> the IT guy that came in and saved the day was Chinese. And he looked like he was about 17. <laughs> spy. We spy. We are his spy. They wouldn't have done the presentation without him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so that should be in the that should be in the article yeah. <laughs> as, as the punchline yeah. as the punchline of the article. <laughs> Go ahead, Lois. Lois. Um, music. There was a short, very short video on YouTube with a young child that's a toddler, maybe three years old, a little boy, who's sitting on his dad's lap, and they're having a piano recital with other students playing piano. And all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, they, they start to play um, Moonlight Sonata. And within seconds, he was tearing up. Yes. It was so cool. Now, the, the person, did you see that? Yeah. And that, uh, they, the stupid people in their comments kept talking about the pianist of an error or something in her, in her playing. Oh. Just, to sort of crap on it. But what I was going to say, maybe not now, Paul, was I was going to ask you what I asked you earlier, which is the difference between a republic and a, d a democracy. So maybe we can do that another time. Um, they're two different things. 
I know. That's, that's a, uh, a republic is about a system of government. Mm -hmm. A democracy is a description of a method of of of, of uh, deciding things. We have a democratic system to decide things, but a republic is not. It's not. It has to do with the, with the, with the system of government. And a republic as a system of government is, is comes out of Plato, where in the, in the discussions in, in, in Plato on the republic, he, um, he, he ends up with, with not, resolving any, not resolving it. So what he does is he develops in, in something called the laws, the idea of of, of a republic being governed by laws. So every time you hear one of these pundits go on about we're a democracy, mm -hmm. they're they are incorrect. We're a republic. We're we're a republic which has democratic which has democratic institutions. Okay. But we're not. But the, those are two different. Um, those are two different. One is one is a system of laws. The other is a system of majority rule. The decision making. System. Yeah, decision making. But yeah. but one is a system of laws. One system of laws. And and and, and, and the U.S. is is a mixed. Uh, Canada is is, is 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 more. It's not really a republic. It's more of a. Of, of a, it's not a republic. It's a confederation of provinces. Of the United States, confederation of states. No, it's a, it's a, it's not a confederation. That's that's the difference. You don't have a, no state has the right to secede in the United States. But Quebec does. But yeah, Canada has 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 right right to secede. Uh, Texas included. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they might not tell agree. them. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they, they might not agree, but they they have no, and that was decided in the Civil War. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in the democracy. Well, I was going to just mention one other thing when we were talking about FDR and whatnot. There's a really good um, movie. It's about 70 minutes. It's with Walter Houston, and it's called Mission to Moscow. And Walter Houston pays plays the ambassador to Russia, and um, FDR had sent him over there so that he could get eyes on what the what the real situation situation was in the economy and whatnot. Um, Walter Houston, his son, did Chinatown, right? John Houston. Mm -hmm. So no, he didn't do it, he, uh, he was in it, right? Yeah, but well, Houston directed it too. No. He didn't? Oh. Uh, okay. Roman Polanski uh, directed it. Oh, right. Um, now I forgot. Who's the one? The name you took, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> I was going to bring that up. Uh, see, I, was gonna, I, wanted to, I forgot to mention that, but I would actually, my initial thinking on that is that there's Henry Morgenthau and there's Franklin Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And Henry Morgenthau had an idea. Roosevelt had an idea. They refer, they refer to that, they refer to that initial plan of not rehabilitating the economy as the Morgenthau plan. And then what they say is that Morgenthau believed that Germany should be turned into some kind of agrarian uh, uh, pasture land. And maybe Morgenthau thought that. But I didn't mention it because I wanted to focus on Franklin Roosevelt's idea. Because my initial th thinking is the distinction between the two. Go ahead. Um, yeah, um, question about from the uh, uh, we're, we're constantly focused on Trump. Is that, are, are we, if we got that right, it's just one human being against all the establishment, or can you, uh, can Charles correct me and point out that there is a group supporting Trump. And if so, who the hell is it in addition to cheating? There's a lot of different groups supporting Trump. Okay. They are not. Or individuals. Maybe I should. No, no. There's a lot of different groups and a mass number of individuals. Okay. okay. 
And these groups are not coherent. That is, they're different factional, uh, different groups. They have different orientations. Some are constitutionalists. Some are uh, trade union. Some are uh, uh, the people who, 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 who organize for Ross Perot, who are who are who who have been behind this, who have created massive blog networks uh, for Trump. They hate both parties. So you have you have both you have this huge independent <coughs> organized through various different individuals or how you supporters, and they're, but they're not coherent. They're not coherent in the sense that they have, um, they're not represented in the establishment, per se. Now, in the establishment, you do have certain, certain uh, elements that are, um, that agree with Trump. And these, these establishment elements agree that it's time for the U.S. to disengage from all these wars. It's time to give up the empire and concentrate on developing uh, the United States, and that's that's always been there. That's always that's always been there. And this these these might be Republicans, traditional conservative Republicans are like that. They tend to be like that. And there's many other 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 types. Um, but but they're not they're not as organized top down as as well as let's say the British the British Empire. Um, but, but what's happening is you're seeing the empire directing all these operations and these people are exposing themselves and they're becoming isolated. So this is, this is a very interesting situation. But, but yes, there is a mass and in the population. What's happened because of the way Trump has come under attack and because of the nature of the attack is, is, does not have the weight of truth to it. What's happening is many of the population are becoming completely dissatisfied with the media, with the establishment, and they're they're flocking to Trump in a way that that um, that, that I've never seen anybody flock to anybody. Now, a good example of this is I was out on the street and uh, at a post office, and this this woman comes up. She says, I'm a Republican. I've been giving and giving and giving to the Republican Party. Oh, you're with LaRouche. And I said, well, we're the ones fighting. You know, we're, you know, the Republican Party isn't fighting. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, so, so now she's Mrs. Republican. She's about 65. She's dressed like, you know, your straight-laced Republican. She's obviously a businesswoman. She's driving a nice car. And she's obviously been in business. You know, she has a certain degree of upper middle class or upper middle class. You know, she has a certain sense of herself, right? And she's she's never, ever, ever looked at us as anything but you know beggars on the street. You know, <laughs> but she said, "Well, yeah, I don't want my name. I don't want you calling me. Okay, I'll give you some money, but no, I don't want to give you any money. I don't have my checkbook." I said, "Well, we take the card." I'm not going to give you my credit card, and then I say, well, we have a swiper. Um, yeah, I say, yeah, we swiper. We, nobody keeps track of your card, okay? She finally decides to come out. She, she gives us her card. She does $50. Small change, right? And uh, then as she's moving away, she says, you know, that FBI. <laughs> she says, it's like Hoover. <laughs> now you gotta, you gotta understand. Hoover was the Republican idol back then in her time. Hoover was God, and here she is. It's like Hoover, and I'm going, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this woman, this woman is talking revolutionary. Stop! It's like Hoover. You, know, you, you heard the, about the Washington. This this woman comes from a you know killer comedy from mommy background. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you hear about that Washington Post editorial? What? They had an editorial this past week. They said it said uh, it goes some. Well, I had an article. It goes something like, you know, the Republican Party used to be the party of law and order. 
<laughs> then it says, now, now they're becoming the party of wild-eyed conspiracies that you only hear from Lyndon LaRouche people in the parking lot. <laughs> so that's, okay, so that's, that's what's going on. I mean, it is happening. This is happening in the population. And I, you know, and I'm surprised every time I go out. I'm surprised by the responses that I'm getting. Like people, the people are following. Of course, they're following on Fox. You know, they don't get the full picture. And then there's deeper, there's more advanced people who are not who are following more on a deeper level. But I tell you, I've never seen this in this kind of activation in the population. Yeah, I, I'm still not sure. Oh, maybe I didn't word the question very well, but it seems that. Um, the establishment has found um, allies of, of, of stature, uh, like Thank you. A, a villainous stature, but a stature, you know, Comey and Clinton and, and Obama, and uh, I don't know all the names, I don't keep them in my head. And I don't, I don't think of any names as allies of Trump. Because because the FBI apparatus, the Justice Department apparatus, has been at the center of all everything that's happened since 1908. They, they're like deeply, deeply, deeply rooted. And of course, the people that are going to be Trump supporters are not deeply rooted. And therefore, they're from all different angles and all different places. But they have one thing in common, they don't like what's happening. So, to give you a sense of how deeply rooted the FBI is, it was created in 1908, after the assassination of McKinley under um, Teddy Roosevelt. It began in the Interior Department. It was transformed. Now, what it did was it went after people who were socialists, not in the post-war period, but in 1908, 1909, 1910, you know, went after the Europeans, Jewish socialists, European socialists, Eastern European socialists, and then it went after everybody that was opposing the entrance, entrance into the war, World War I, on, on, on the side of the British Empire. Because up to that point, the British Empire was not, was up, up to that period, of just before World War I, the British Empire was not loved by the American people. They, 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 we were not going, the American people were not going to go to war with the British against the, the Germans. There were many Germans in the country, and there were a lot of people that, that didn't want to defeat the Germans. They wanted the British Empire to be defeated. So they ran the operation to target the leadership of the anti-war, the ones who didn't want us to go into World War I. Without their operation, the United States would not have gone into World War I, and then there would have been a, an end to World War I without Germany being uh, dismantled, right? So, so then, then after that, after the Bolsheviks came to power, they ran the Palmer raids in 1919 against unions. I mean, this, is, this has been going on for a long, long time, and it's one generation after another, with Hoover being in there for a long time, 50 years, being in there. And they ran the operation against FDR. They ran the operation against uh, the coal, the, you know, the, the, everything. So th this is an institutionalized structure that is being forced to, to attack a president which is willing to fight and it's coming out, out. And so that's why you don't have a clear, a clear uh, core crowd that's supporting Trump. But there, but there is one very small core group that's not just, it's not that we're supporting Trump, it's we're supporting getting the, the crushing the, the, we're, we're supporting creating an understanding that will allow people to direct their firepower against the coordinating agency behind the FBI, behind the intelligence community. Because it's not the intelligence, they, could, they don't care about Brennan or, or, or Hillary or Comey or Mueller. They, they're willing to sacrifice everybody. It doesn't matter. They're willing to sacrifice everybody because it's not coming, they're not coordinating. They, they are merely carrying out a part, but it's also being run through the corporations, through the cartels that, that Charles continued on. So the, the whole thing, it's the whole system is coming unglued. The whole system is going under, it's coming under, it's coming unglued. Then you have 
you, you know, you have the shift towards the financial sector, you know, and, and all of that. So it's, it's, and it's really ugly because it's really, it, not ugly, it's, it's really not over. This is just the beginning of, of the process of the, of the complete transformation of, of the world. They ran the cover for the Kennedy assassination. They ran the assassination of Malcolm X. And, they, and King. They portrayed the Martin Luther King. Yeah. They so, and they covered up 9-11. Yeah. 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 So this is the core. This is the core institutional. But it's, they're not running it. It's, I mean, they're, they're an agency that's been, in, been running these operations. But the, the coordination doesn't come from within the FBI. It comes from this uh, higher level. Of oligarchical element, which is British is really scared now. This Belt and Road has got them really freaked out, They're completely freaked out. It's not just that it, that LaRouche proposed it; it's actually being carried out. The, the Belt and Road is not the solution in the United States. Everything you've just said for the last ten minutes, I I, I understand. It's it's really clear. You're making a good picture to me. But if you, if you refer to the Belt and Road, I can't see how the Belt and Road is going to come alongside Trump and clean up the establishment. It is, what, it is the driving force for the, for the crisis. The Belt and Road is the driving force it's for the, the crisis. Side of the bearing no, 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 no. Don't look at it in physical terms. The Belt and Road is the transformation of the planet industrially. And what's going to happen for the United States is that the United States is giving the United States the possibility of, 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 of defeating that enemy within that's preventing the United States from, from, from okay. well, I think it's, that's destroying the United States. Well, I think you already see the potential of, of what the Belt and Road can do because of what it means for underdeveloped nations. Uh, it used to be that the only access to credit for underdeveloped nations was through the West. That's not the case anymore. There's a whole different game. That in other words, the power of the United States lies in, in, in the colonial system of the post, you know, the, the post. financial system. Yeah, the financial system, and that's finished. And, the Chinese can make that and it means the United States can no longer exist except to change internally. Then, 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 then what I see then is that the Trump is really sort of irrelevant. Yeah. No, he's very relevant. His no, leadership, see, Trump's leadership is extremely relevant. Anybody else, if you had taken any of those other clowns who tried to debate him and got squashed, they would, if, they, if you put one of those people up there, like a, a Jeb Bush or Rubio, if you put any of those people up there, any of them, they tried to actually uh, resist and do no. something different. They would get crushed. But I don't. But I, I, I don't, don't see that Trump is going to bring these ideas uh, that the built and road physically. Okay. Can I, well, actually, can, 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 I, can I tell you how he is? You want to tell me? You want? I'll tell you how he's doing it. It's very simple, actually. He's saying we should have good relations with Russia. That's really radical compared to what everyone else is saying. Everyone else is saying, oh, we can't work with Russia. They're just I failed to mention, yeah, I failed to mention what he said to the senators. Yeah, you said two things. Yeah, yeah I failed to mention. He said to the senators, he said, we spent $7 trillion in the mm -hmm. Middle East. It was worse than wasted. Look at the death and destruction. And we can't even finance the building of a road or a rail or a bridge. You figure. And what is he saying? He's saying the whole system is, is forget it. The whole system has got to be changed. But, well, how is he going to change it? Well, he, he's not gonna, he doesn't have the means to change it at, at this time immediately. But the longer he stays in office, the more potential he has to develop the, the needs. Like he, what he was telling, the, what he was telling to the Democrats on the infrastructure, the senators, he said, "You come up with the program." What's he saying to them? Work with me. Yeah. Work with me. He's he's work. He's organizing people. So he has yeah. to. This, yeah. this thing has to Absolutely. be organized, and he is organizing. Yeah. But he is up against this the, the freakout 
beyond belief. And also you the know. things that you hear the most about what he's doing is because he, uh, it is in my opinion, and I think there's a good um, argument for it, um, the media is controlled, right? All he has to do is blurt out one tweet. And he drives the whole neoliberal establishment nuts and then that's all they talk about for a week. Every time I've noticed, every single time, the liberal establishment is going nuts over some stupid thing and blowing it up, he has also done something behind the scenes that gets zero media. Zero. But if I could if I could just answer this, and this is coming from a practical point of view. Because I hear your question, or, or I hear your statement. My argument. Your argument. Um, our unions have been decimated. Now, Canada is going to China and saying, in your labor regulations, you need to put in uh, uh, carbon caps and LGTB. Right. Let's try that Saudi Arabia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are embedded in the labor laws or yeah, the so-called labor, you know, um, proposals that we're trying to make in these FTAs. They're not labor laws. They're not labor regulations. So we are going to go through this conflict. We're still, we're not there yet. We're going through a conflict where this culture is clashing. However, I know that um, the Belt and Road Initiative under China's Communist Party leadership will never bend, and if they do, we're all cooked. They will never bend to the Western free market speculative casino economy that we have now. Their saving grace is the fact that they don't have that. That in itself is a principle. Embedded in that, in the laws and their FTAs, embedded in their agreements that they have with other countries, like the guys, the, the guy, the guy uh, Guy Saint Jacques, who said um, China is the only country on the planet right now who can plan 50 years in advance. Yeah. Why? Right. Because when they make a loan, it's at low interest, and it's not. They are not expecting a return for 50 years. There is going to be a system clash. We have the semblance of um, a, a capital free market. What we actually have is an oligarchical run economic system. Right. And the culture that props that up is, you know, is is got to be changed. It's not going to be pretty. And it's not some magic wand where we just say, oh, the United States is joining the Belt and Road, it's all done. There is a whole shitload of work that's going to be done. And, it's, and it may take 20, 30 years to do it. Well, actually, there <laughs> is in both Canada and the United States a Franklin Delano Roosevelt reflex. Tradition, yeah. Uh, if RV then it did, was converted to FDR at the last moment. Why put the Bank of Canada and the CBC? Um, I, I'd like to pose a question based on what I heard a moment ago in response to my remark about Trump. Um, what if one of Trump's opponents had become we, uh, the Democratic, the, the Republican candidate for presidency and won? Would that have stopped the Belt and Road transformation? New paradigm around the world? Would it I don't think so, but it would have okay. it would have created a much greater threat of a nuclear war. That's that's that is uh, okay. That's a good re re report because what I would, what I'm saying is that that um, I I would think that the new paradigm as you're offering, you're you're describing in this room, and the, the one belt one road uh, as we read through the and other sources that. If it's that good, it's going to be unstoppable anyway. It doesn't matter who the American president is. But it and that's, be, that's what I meant. Unless it's a nuclear <coughs> war. Right. That's how exactly. Start. Trump is just a reality that we have to confront. That's all. Because he's like, I mean, anyone else in there right now, like he, he represents, it, it's kind of, what he, what he represents to the people is anti-establishment. 
Should he be dethroned, we're looking at civil war. Well, Pence and nuclear war. At war, war Pence. Pence. Yeah. First off, it's Pence. Then yeah, but... It's not for, it's for, it's not for, it's not for Trump. If you had anybody else in there, then that means we're either having nuclear war, or if you don't have a nuclear war, then we're going to have mass starvation and death in the United States, in the transatlantic. And in Canada. Because nobody's going to do anything. It will be the onrushing economic breakdown. That's re that's real. Yeah. Exactly. He's probably overcooking. I you know it's too bad Phil's not here because um, <coughs> you made a good point because I think this goes to the, the morale and the the, the the state of people's. Um,